There's a reason why every manufacturer says, if you are not going to be using this device for a period of time, remove the batteries. Every owner's manual says this, and everybody fails to do it, and this is what can happen if you don't do what you're told. So I was given a camera to uh, take a look at. This is an old Canon T50, 35mm SLR. And, um, well, this one here has had... I don't even know how to open this thing up to put film in it. It's been so long. Shouldn't be any film in this thing now, I don't think. Yeah, it's empty. Good. Yeah, I think you just pull this up and it opens, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's where the film goes like that. It's been so long since I've had one of these cameras. I had a T90 back in my film camera days. But this one was brought to me to see if I could do anything for it because the person that owns it wants to sell it and they noticed that a battery had gone corroded and will not come out so I guess we'll see if we can get the battery out and whether the camera will power up we'll try it out I have some lenses for it I have a T90 still so we'll see if I can get this battery out and get the camera to power up and that way I can at least let the person that owns it know whether they can expect to get anything for it or whether they should just toss it in the trash now one of the ways that I used to get batteries out in the past was I drilled them out. And the easiest way to do it is if you use a, a, a screw, and I always recommend something that binds to the bit and locks on the bit, like a real Robertson with a real Robertson screwdriver, because you see that bit has got positive torque, or that screw has positive torque to the screwdriver, and then we can generally drive the screw into the back of the battery, on the bottom of the battery, and hopefully it will go through. Now I may have to drill a pilot hole in here. I probably will have to drill a pilot hole. Depends on how solid this battery is and how badly it is corroded. I think I'm going to have to drill a small hole there to get the screw started. The idea is I'll, I'll thread the screw in and then I can use something to grab the screw like a pair of pliers and hopefully pull the battery out. So I'm going to grab a small drill bit. We're going to drill a small pilot hole in that battery, in the base of the battery, so that I can drive the screw in. Okay, I might be able to drill or drive that screw in now, which I can, I think. Good. Now the screw's gone in, and now we can just use it to pull the dead battery out, the corroded battery. And it was an energizer. Yeah. I don't think there's anything left in this battery to be corrosive anymore. It's all leaked out, which it has, so we'll toss the battery. Now I'll work on cleaning up the camera and see if it'll work. Another piece that they gave me with this was the Vivitar Auto Thyristor 2800D flash, but the battery compartment appears to be frozen on that too, so I get the sneaking suspicion that there are batteries inside here that have also leaked out. So we may have to remove them the same way. Oh man, this is in bad shape. These batteries are all totally corroded. And you know, that's why they always say do not leave batteries in devices that you're not planning to use because this is what happens when you do it. And when batteries fail, they usually ruin the product that they're in. There's one out, Duracell. Might be able to get these ones out without having to drill. And we'll see how bad the damage is inside. Which could be catastrophic or it might not be that bad. It all depends on where that battery acid got to. It actually doesn't look too bad inside. If you look down inside there, it looks like the corrosion was contained to the actual battery compartment itself. Which means that this one may be savable. The same probably can't be said for the battery compartment though, the, the contacts here are pretty much shot. I don't know how bad it is inside the uh, camera itself, it looks like that acid may have gotten inside the camera, so before I go any further I'm going to see if it will even power up.
But all the battery case is falling apart too. It's cracked, fell apart. I'll have to try to fix that. I got a lens on it. Let's just see whether this thing will do anything when I push the button. So at least we know the camera itself is powering up and attempting to work. Well, I'm waiting for the glue to dry that I put on the, uh, the battery compartment to try to put it back together. I figured I would put some batteries in this flash and see whether the flash works. Not getting power, so I'm just going to see if I can clean up that uh, battery connection a little bit better. The grinding wheel and see if we can get the, uh, the corrosion off here so that it'll make a, a little better connection. Just need to scratch up the surface a bit so that the uh, contact will get made. Dremel tools are great. Got this one at the estate. It gave me a whole lot of other crap. Uh, like half the stuff I don't need. Like beta machines. Who needs a beta machine? Never mind two of them. Although I do have a couple of inquiries for people that want to buy them, so those beta machines will likely be headed off soon. But let's just see whether this will power up now that I've buffed up the contacts a bit. Still don't hear anything. When I turn it on, I still don't hear any attempt to charge. So this may have more problems than just the batteries when corroded. I don't see any sign of any corrosion that got into the unit, but that doesn't mean that it didn't. It just doesn't look like there was any corrosion on the other contacts at the bottom. Well, I still have no go. I'm just curious as to whether the flash unit itself is shot, so I've just connected it up to my power supply. I'm going to apply 6 volts and see whether it charges up. And if it does, then uh, we know it's just a connection problem with the battery. I think that problem's been resolved, though, and it doesn't appear to be charging, and I don't hear anything. So I think we have a problem inside the flash unit. So, and I don't see it drawing any current either. Therefore, I would say that it's probably in the flash unit itself. Back to the camera though, I've got the battery compartment, the, the battery compartment's been glued where it was cracking. It holds batteries and the camera itself appears to work. Again, I have no way of testing it because I'm not going to go and buy some film and take some pictures and spend a bloody fortune getting the film processed, but uh, it turns on and it uh, Looks like it lights up at meters, and of course it's a manual focus camera, but it does, it does light up, and you can hear the film advance going, and then when you rewind it, you pop it open, it resets the film counter, and when you put your new film in and you load it, it should automatically there we go. So that probably is working. As far as I can test it anyway. To say I'm not a I'm not a film guy, so I don't uh, I don't use film. I haven't used film in, in many years. I was just kind of curious to see whether this would work for for the guy that owns it that wants to sell it, so that has been tested. The next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll cheat. We can take apart this um, flash and see. I'm just going to clear my bench off here and get this uh, now coated in battery acid mat away or battery dry battery acid. I'll have to wash that. Get that out of the way right now. And uh, we'll take apart the flash and just see quickly whether it's just a wire that's broken or something in the bottom of the flash and then I can get on to uh, more important things to work on as I do have 
I actually do have some paid jobs in here, believe it or not. This one is not a paid job. This is just, uh, can you see whether this thing is, you can save the patient so that I can try to sell it and make some money. So I'm not being paid a dime to work on this camera because it was basically going to go in the garbage. But uh, maybe he'll, if he sells it, maybe he'll share some of the profits with me. Probably not. I don't know what old film cameras are worth these days. I wouldn't imagine that they're worth much, but then, hey, what do I know? I don't shoot film. And I haven't shot 35 millimeter film, uh, well, at least at least 20 years, more, more than that. I think I, I got my first digital camera in the, in the uh, I'm gonna say, late 90s. I've got it still. I should show it off. Some of you guys might want to see it. It's an old an old Coolpix, I think it's an old Coolpix 900, an icon. 2 megapixel. And the battery compartment's broken on it so it won't hold the batteries. There is a circuit board in here, so maybe this is where our, our fault is. I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing open. I guess there's probably some screws that are either underneath this sticker. No, probably underneath this. I'll tell you one thing that is in here somewhere is a, uh, there's some screws down there. I bet you these are what holds it together. There will be a capacitor in there that can hold one hell of a charge and give you a good jolt if you're not careful when uh, working on them. Anyone who's ever been bit by a, uh, a flash capacitor knows how painful it can be. It's like, you know, it's 300 or so, 350 volts that just charge stored up in a, in a cap. And uh, yeah, it can give you a good kick across the room, that's for sure. Now, uh, one of the fun things that we did when I was in high school, because we did stupid things, was we took photo flash capacitors and the little circuit that's in here, because, of course, they... They wouldn't let us play with high voltage like that on our, on our benches. Our power supplies were relatively low voltage, but what uh, what what some of the guys would do is they would take an old one of those old remember those old disposable cameras that you could buy, and they you know they had ones with the flash and everything. Well, they'd take an old disposable camera and they'd rip it apart and get the flash off of it. That comes over. I think that's how it comes apart. They'd get, the, they'd get the flash from one of those cameras, those, those disposable cameras, and uh, get the flash unit out of the thing, and, uh, and the circuitry, of course. You could put a battery in it and charge the thing up, and then uh, throw the capacitor at somebody and call their name, and they'd catch it. Say, hey, Mike! Toss the cap that's charged, and he'd catch the thing. You'd get a little surprise, and everybody would laugh their ass off. Maybe these screws have to come out. Of course, I'll never forget the time that uh, one of the guys in the class, and I, and I know this guy, he, he was a kid that lived up just on the next block over from me. I went to, went to elementary school and high school with him. And anyway, uh, Somebody took a, a ghillie coil, if, you, if anybody remembers what a ghillie coil was. Basically, it's just a, a, a coil of wire, insulated wire. And, and you would, what they were using them for was you put a magnet through it, and it would generate voltage, right? And you could create an electromagnet out of it and stuff. Well, um, what a few people did with these ghillie coils was they hooked them up to like a you know 20 volt power supply or whatever and they got the thing red hot like the thing was like literally smoking and then they took it over to this poor kid and branded him with it he got this big burn on the side of his arm a bunch of goofballs I went to school with I tell you another kid got branded with a quarter because in the science lab some idiot thought it would be fun to uh, 
heat a quarter up on a Bunsen burner and then brand somebody with it on their arm. Say I went I went to school with a bunch of idiots. Maybe everybody maybe there's idiots in every school. I'm sure there probably is, but Okay. There's this unit apart now. What is uh, the problem? Is it the wires corroded down here? I bet you it's the wires corroded on the, uh, the power wires. There's the big capacitor I'm talking about that can bite. This thing is, uh, what is the size wise on this one? Just so you guys get an idea of how big it is. They're, they're a special photo flash cap. I was not even going to say what it is. Not even going to say what this thing is. But uh, this thing here uh, can get one hell of a charge and um, it can really give you a good kick if you were to touch the terminals and it's charged. Uh, you see I'm avoiding the, the business end of this and I'm avoiding the business end of the flash tube too because I don't know whether it's charged or not. I'm assuming it's not because I didn't hear the oscillator come on. I get a sneaking suspicion that the wire is corroded down here on the negative terminal and that's why it's not working. Is that the, the terminal is uh, nope, it's got a wire on it. What the heck? And that one's got a wire on it too. So why did this thing not charge? Well, let's just uh, let's put power to it again and see what happens. So obviously this is the negative, and this one is positive. And if things work, this thing should start to charge up. I don't see any current draw whatsoever. Make sure I've actually got power. Yep. 10 amps. 10 amps available. Nothing. No current draw whatsoever. If I put my meter across the flash tube, it should be zero volts across it. So across the flash tube, there is nothing. And that's the voltage from the capacitor. So this is not charging whatsoever. Um, probably battery acid got onto the board. That's what I'm thinking, is battery acid got in here. And it's ruined this unit. And at this point, I'm going to probably say this unit is beyond repair, but let's just see if we can get in here. Get this board out of here and see if we can see anything else that's kind of bad on here. screws. See there's another circuit board underneath here. I'm sure we'll find corrosion in here somewhere. Huh. Don't see any obvious corrosion. Yeah, I don't see any signs of obvious... Oh, wait a minute. There's some right down here, I think, at this end. Maybe this is where the fault is, right down here. Let's get a close look at that. Yeah, it looks like there's corrosion right here. We can verify that with the Mr. Meter. Let's just put the meter on here and see whether I've got uh, continuity through here. So I'm just going to put the probe a little bit further back, back here. And we'll measure. We've got continuity. We've got continuity, got, got continuity to here but we don't have continuity to here. What about this terminal here? This is a positive battery terminal, I believe. So let's just measure whether this one's got continuity. And that one does. So there's, a, there's an open circuit right here. So maybe if I just scrape this away and bridge a wire over where this is open, this will work. Yeah, you can see it right there. So I'll bridge a wire over top of this, and we'll see whether this thing will charge up and fire, which would be kind of cool.
All right, now let's put some power to this unit and see whether the bat, see whether the uh, unit will power up and whether it will charge up the the circuitry. And uh, you know, the test is, I guess, I push this down like that. I'll use something to push it with. I won't touch it with my bare hands if that's what you guys are worried about. I don't want to get jolted. We'll see whether this thing charges first of all. So here's positive. And I'll just limit the current down on this thing so it's not going to go nuclear. Uh, two amps is drying. We should see a light start flashing down here momentarily if this thing charges up. It's drawing 0.8 amps now at 6 volts. Let's just see if it will flash when I hit the test button. No, nothing, nothing going. Drawing 200 milliamps now, so it's still drawing some current, but this thing's not charging. And if I put my meter across the, the capacitor, see if there's any juice on here. So here's the high voltage cap. Oh, the light just came on. The little light just came on down here, so it's charged. It's got voltage, so this thing should, this thing should fire. We should see a big bright flash on this thing when I push the test button in. And it did, it flashed. So it works, cool. Excellent. We'll just disconnect power and discharge. Probably it should discharge. Maybe not. Hmm. But this definitely will. Scared you guys, didn't I? Let's do this again. This is charged. Watch the big spark, boys and girls. That is power, look at that. That's why you don't wanna fool around with electronic flash units because they pack one hell of a punch. And believe me, that has enough energy in there to stop your heart. Even after I've discharged it once, it still stores a fair bit of punch. These are not to be played with because they do store one hell of a lot of energy. This is exactly what is in defibrillators, although they don't just have one, they have many capacitors, but this is what's in an, a, in a, an electro, uh, auto uh, heart defibrillator, AED. And it, in all defibrillators for that matter. So um, yeah, electric, electronic flash units are not something that you really wanna play around with. It's, you know, it's a couple hundred volts, but the thing is, they have so much current that they can discharge. You saw what it did to that screwdriver. It, you know, it gave me a good arc, and it's 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 welded itself. Look at the end of the screwdriver. You can imagine how many amps are passing through there for a split second, and it actually it actually burned the end of my screwdriver. And that's why before I put this thing back together, I will make sure that this thing is completely discharged by making sure that that cap is dead, which it is. Now I'll start to reassemble this unit and see whether I can get it back together and whether it will work once I get it back together. So I don't even know how this thing came apart. Now this is a, this is a fairly powerful flash unit. It's got a good size flash, so that capacitor is, is pretty big. The ones that uh, my idiot uh, idiot uh, classmates used to play around with when I was in high school, they were. Uh, the, the small ones that use like a, a, a single AA battery in, the, in those disposable cameras they still pack the walls but not nearly as big as this because the flash tube itself was very very small they were a fixed one this one here can actually deliver quite a good flash it has a, a light sensor and uh, in dark situations it would flash much stronger than in uh, in bright situations like in the shop here it's measuring the amount of light in the shop that's why it, the flash did not appear to be all that bright, but these ones here would automatically adjust. Just putting that terminal back on the end here. Would automatically adjust to the uh, the ambient light. So what we saw here wasn't a full discharge. That cap there holds a hell of a lot of energy. The ones that uh, the idiots that I went to school with were playing around with, they were just little tiny uh, caps that were, you know, maybe t I think were maybe 10 microfarads at, uh, at 350 volts or so. Or or 450 volts 
this one here is more than likely 100 microfarad maybe. I don't know. It doesn't say. It, it, just, it just has a number on it. It does not tell you how many microfarads this thing is, but it's got a fair kick. Got that part together. Let's just put the flash unit itself back together. Set the flash head in. the back on. Probably won't work when I get it back together, but hey, we tried. Okay, that's back together. Now this uh, this piece goes on here. This is the it um, clips in like this. I'll replace by a screw. Oops, wrong orientation. side there's this other piece that clips in like that. I'll replace by two screws. Moment of truth. Units back together. It's charging up. I can hear it. I got a little light on the back here. Test fire. Okay, it works. Excellent. It's working. Auto check. Flashes inside here too. Yeah. So this thing's this thing's firing and it's working with batteries. So I would say that uh, this is probably one that I can give back to the guy and say, hey, you know what? You might get ten bucks for it. I don't know what these things are worth, but I'm sure it's worth something. The camera itself, uh, the, the glue is all set up on the battery compartment. If I put the batteries in, positive down, or positive up and negative up, close it up. Okay, I think it works. And that's about it. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.